When it comes to displaying information using Arduino, you have a couple different options. One is to use a character display like this, where you just have a couple LEDs per letter, per number, whatever this is, per character. And then using this, you can display letters like H, you can do A's, you can do one to nine, you can do whatever you want. It's a very simple display. You can't really show too much using this. Your next option is to go with a dot matrix, or I like to call it LED matrix. Usually they're in a proportional manner. So in this case, it's uh, eight by eight and then you can individually turn on each LED here, allowing you to draw shapes, smiley face, circles, whatever you want. The next step over is to use an actual character display, which kind of looks like a screen you'd see on a calculator, cash register, any kind of tech where it's not like an iPhone screen, but it still displays information. In this case, uh, I've been building on stream for the past couple of streams, a, a smart clock that could display things like time, date, temperature of the room, maybe temperature of the outside, just a bunch of different features. It could play music, it could do a bunch of things, and LCD display goes in there, and then we're able to use buttons to navigate it. This is definitely the one I would recommend everyone use. The price difference between one of these and a dot matrix or something like that isn't that big of a difference, so I'd always say go for one of these. You can even get bigger ones. This one is 16 by two, so that lets you put 16 characters in the top row, 16 in the bottom row. You can get like a 20 by four, or you can get like even a more complex one. These are a little bit more complicated than just like an LED matrix like this one. But just like our actual computer screens, they work in a simple manner, but at a complex level. So what you're gonna need to do this build is an actual character display. You're gonna need a 220 ohm resistor that looks like this. I'll put up the colors on the screen. Usually you just have to match the colors that are on this little blue piece that's out of focus and you'll know which one's the 220 ohm resistor. You're gonna need a potentiometer, which is just pretty much a screw knob. It says on it 10K, which is the one we're gonna be using. This is gonna to be to change the brightness of the screen. You're gonna need a bunch of cables. In this case, we're going to use male to male, and then we're gonna throw everything on a breadboard. So when we work, we're gonna have our screen plugged into the breadboard, let's say like this and then we'll be able to plug in our ports here and then figure it out all from here. Oh, and also like always, you're gonna need your Arduino. On most sensors that we've used, we've had a positive and negative and then a sensor cable and we've just used that sensor cable either as an input or as an output. In this case, it's a little bit more complicated. We have a bunch of different pins here and we don't need to use all of them. Some we use for one kind of situation, some we use for another. So on the screen here, I'm gonna put a picture of the actual pinout of the board. The first one is our VSS, that's our ground port. The second one is our VDD, that is our power port, just like every sensor we've used. Then VO is going to be what we're gonna connect that potentiometer to. So this is just going to be a resistor. So the more you turn it, the stronger the light will get, and then the other way around, it'll get weaker. Then you have a bunch of other ports like register, read and write, operation. And then when it comes to our digital ports, D0 to D7 is for 8-bit mode, and D4 to D7 is 4-bit mode. Don't worry if you don't understand, I'm gonna show you exactly what ports we're gonna use when we actually build the project. Then after that, you have your power and your ground for your LCD backlight. This is what lights up the screen because you light up the LEDs, but then you also have to put a strong light behind the screen to make sure that it all shows if it's dark in the room or whatever. Kind of like when you put your computer into night mode and it gets a lot dimmer, you're turning off that strong blue light that makes your screen brighter when you need it to be bright during the day. On the screen, I'm gonna put another picture where I show the actual pinout and the whole system and how it connects. It looks a little bit complicated, so you're probably gonna to wanna to pause the video here and take your time, but if you don't wanna do that, we'll do it together right now. First thing I'm gonna do is just unplug all my extra cables here and start ripping them apart. So we have a lot of ports to plug it in and I don't have enough cables to use red and black and let's say yellow, like on this uh, example on the screen here. So we're just gonna have to go with what we got. First pin is our VSS. This is our ground pin for the Arduino. Now one thing we're gonna do that we don't usually do in our videos is we're going to take one cable and dedicate it to ground and one cable and dedicate it to power. So we're gonna go onto our board, onto our Arduino. We're gonna plug into the five volt, this red cable. And then we're gonna plug into the breadboard on the red line. Now that we plugged in here on this red line, let me zoom in a bit. Now that we plugged in here, this whole row on top here, the second row is all gonna be power ports. Then if we plug in the ground into the one right on top of that, 
Now that whole first row is gonna be ground. One thing you should know is when working on a breadboard, these lines right here are vertical, these are horizontal. So when I plug something into VSS here, it's not activating the horizontal line, it's activating the vertical line. So we got our ground cable here and we're just going to plug that into our ground. Next one is our power, so we're just gonna plug that in there and plug it into our power. Keep an eye out, make sure you don't put anything into the wrong port. You would really not wanna burn your board or hurt yourself. Next up is our potentiometer. So one thing I'm gonna do is just plug in straight to the board. So we're giving ourselves two ports on the top here, which will connect to our one port on the bottom there. So we got one here, two on top here, and we're using that as a splitter. And then on the top there, we're gonna get another two cables. One will go in there. One will go right next to that. Now that we got that plugged in, we're gonna want the right one to be the power. So in this case, our orange is going to be power. And our blue is going to be another ground. Make sure you got that all lined up. Make sure your potentiometer is sitting good. And you can actually try and twist it left and right. Seems to be working for us. Now one over from that is going to be our 12 cable. So we're gonna plug in one over and we're gonna send this to the 12 on the Arduino. Now the next one over is a ground cable. So plug this in right next to that first yellow one and send it to the ground. Now we're gonna go to the next one over from that black one and go and plug that into 11 on the Arduino. So we go yellow to 12, black to ground, yellow to 11. So now we're gonna skip four dots, one, two, three, four. And this is going to plug into five. And then the next one's gonna go into four. This one goes to five. Next one goes to four. Then the next one over that, get some more cables in here. It's going to go to three. And this one's gonna to go to two. So just five to two is what you want to plug in the next ones in. Definitely recommend looking at the diagram and coming back to your Arduino and making sure that everything's lined up and good. Then we're gonna use our resistor finally. I recommend you take pliers and use the pliers to shove in that metal pin because it bends super easily. So our resistor is going to be plugging into the second to last port here. Not the most beautiful setup, but it's gonna work. We're gonna plug into that same resistor line and that is going to be going to power. Then the next one, which is another ground, is going to be plugging in to the absolute last plug, which is K, and that's going to be our ground. Oh, look at that. We have power on the screen. So what we did there is give power to the backlight. There's nothing displayed on the screen because the Arduino isn't outputting anything, but we know that we're actually outputting power to our board, and if you pull it over and look at the side here, that super bright light, that is the backlight leaking out from the side. Let's go over it one more time. First pin goes to ground, second pin goes to power, third pin goes to potentiometer and gets split into two pins, one going to power, one going to ground. Then we got a yellow cable going to 12 on the board, a black cable going to ground, a yellow cable going to 11. Then we skip over four dots, one, two, three, four, and we go over to our green cable here, which goes to five, the next one goes to four, the next one goes to three, the last one goes to two. Then we put our resistor from A into power line, and then we put our blue cable from K into ground. Now what we want to do is go and open up our Arduino editor and actually write some code so we could display something on the screen. When you program, if you've never programmed before, and there's something that you need someone else has done usually it's called a library or a framework and you can import that into your project and so and you can import that into your project and save yourself a bunch of time instead of you doing it yourself from scratch so we're going to go into our tools here 
We're gonna go into manage libraries. And then you guys are gonna find liquid crystal and you're gonna install it. Built by Arduino, Adafruit, I'm using version 107, it shouldn't really matter. All you gotta do is select the version, just use the latest version and install. Now that you have the liquid crystal library installed and downloaded, you can go and actually include it into your project. So all you gotta do is hashtag include liquidcrystal.h and put it inside those uh, arrows and it's going to include that library and now we could use it. So we could right away go, I'm lazy so I'm just gonna copy paste the word here, call the library and we're gonna use the LCD command and we're gonna put in the pins that we used on the board. So we went on 12, 11, and then five all the way down to two. Then that's pretty much all we gotta do. The screen is now activated, so we can actually go and tell it to begin and tell it what kind of screen we're using. We're using a 16 by two. And then right away after that, we can call, let's say print and say, refresh that project, compile it and upload it to our board. And it should be working. Let's go and change the contrast here. Maybe we're just on a bad contrast. Oh, and there we go. Now we have our written text on the screen. And if you keep pushing this at one point, you'll probably just blow it out. Yeah. Now it's too bright. So we're just gonna go and lower it a little bit. There we go. So you can technically do anything you want. One thing I wanna note that I actually keep forgetting about when I'm working on projects with this is if you were to print two things, let's say we print the same thing twice. It's not going to erase the first one and, and write over it with the second one. It's going to try and squeeze them both on. So as you can see, it goes like, subscribe, I don't know, and then it starts to try the, word, the next like, and it falls off the screen. So if you wanted to write the same thing on the second line, you have to set the cursor. So if we go lcd.set cursor, and we tell it go to the first box on the second line, so between zero and 15 and zero and one, so we're going onto the first box on the second line because computers count from zero. And then we write that, if we run this, it should print the same thing on two different lines. Boom, there we go. Now here's another problem we're gonna run into. I put the word count in the loop, but I didn't clear before the print. So when I actually try and print this, it's going to just say the word count a thousand times. And it's gonna freak out on the screen. So we have to go here and LCD, clear again like earlier and now every time it loops it's going to clear the screen and then put the word count now it's kind of freaking out because I'm asking it to do it at an insane speed so we're just gonna throw a little delay here and tell it to do every second let's refresh that do it one more time now every second it's clearing the screen and it's rewriting onto it the word count if you have any questions or want to learn more about how to use this screen, how to use Arduinos, how to use certain sensors, or you just want to watch cool videos where I build really dumb projects that endanger my life, like this one right here where I shock myself on Twitch stream. Can no one shock me for a second? He's holding a knife. Credits on me? Ah! One of you dicks fucking shocked me. Like the video, maybe subscribe to the channel, and let me know if there's anything you want to see or anything you want to learn. I'm always open to it. Thanks everyone for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.